My name is Sasha Cutler and I'm a nurse here at San Francisco General. Are you a member of a union? Oh yes I am. I'm an activist in the union. Which union? Uh, Service Employees International Union, Local 10 to 1. And you're here on this picket line today on the inauguration day of President Donald Trump. What are your fears about what's going to happen to this hospital and health care for people in San Francisco and around the country? Well, what's already happened has been that uh, refugees are being targeted when they're the people that we care for here. Uh, people are, he's advocating for sexual assault, and those are the people that we care for here. He's bragged about assaulting women, and women are the biggest part of nurses everywhere. So it's an attack on all of us, and the good news is that he is less popular than the Affordable Care Act. And the first name of the Affordable Care Act is actually the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. And as nurses, it's our duty to protect our patients. And they are assaulting our patients and our health care and our economy and virtually everybody that's not a rich, white, straight man. And how does it feel being a health care provider here when you can't really take care of people because you don't have the funding for all the care that's needed and here right in the richest city in, in the United States, San Francisco? Well, we've, we've fought for and we have, uh, we have improved some services, uh, but these are the people that need the services the most. And the fact that they've appointed people that care more about, about inspecting the genitals of people who are going to the bathroom for no reason at all, other than their own desire to build on a platform of hate, means that uh, we're, um, we, we really need to be able to focus on what people need and what we deserve here. And Tom Price, the appointee of Trump to head the Secretary of uh, Health and Human Services, he has financial conflicts of interest. What faith did you have that he's going to actually protect health care for people in the United States? He will protect health care for the people that give him money. So I'm sure that he will continue to have a very good health care plan. And I'm very sure that the big insurance companies and big pharma will continue to make big profits under him. He has to be stopped. We cannot pretend that this is merely a matter of disagreement over things or wait and see what happens. We don't have the luxury of waiting to see what happens when you're working in health care. People are suffering right now. And are you in favor of single payer, and how would that change the dynamics of health care rights in California and nationally? Single payer would be the, the obvious solution, or it's something that must be considered because that's what's done in almost every other part of the world. To, the alternative to that is to put all of the money into the pockets of the people who already have way too much money. We can't be doing that because they're the ones that are responsible for this. So. That's not, that's not going to do anything. Mark Zuckerberg, uh, a resident of San Francisco, his name should not be on this hospital because this, the people of San Francisco paid ten times as much money to build this beautiful hospital that we have here for our patients. He provided a donation and he probably got a nice tax deduction for that. If the rich people would pay their taxes, then we would be able to truly have the finest health care system in the world. And privatization, is that a threat here uh, at San Francisco General and the healthcare system? You can just take a look at the sign. They put up a sign to Wells Fargo Bank. We are standing right now in front of what they are calling Wells Fargo Plaza. The people that have, uh, the people that are also opposed to LGBT rights, they're opposed to workers' rights as well. So the coming administration is making everybody sick. We're here in public health, and we need to do something to defend public health. And that means opposing Trump and opposing all of his appointees to the, the government. This is not a time for business as usual, because we have the business of providing health care, which is ongoing. And if they pass ACA in California, 5 million people would lose their health care, 200,000 workers would lose their jobs. Uh, California has 130 billionaires. Uh, it has tremendous wealth, and also it has a supermajority in the legislature, Democrats and Republicans, uh, Democrats, a, a Democratic governor. Couldn't they pass single payer? Couldn't they pass a capital tax on these billionaires like Zuckerberg to pay for health care for free education in California? I think that's an excellent plan, and we're hoping for single payer. People are working very hard on, on just that. But it's the, again, it's, a, it's our job here to do something about it. It may be incremental to have the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, but at least it's, it's not taking things away from the people that need it the most. I'm glad you're here. Uh, when Trump got elected, what somebody asked me was, Brenda, aren't you upset 
from day one, I have never been upset. What I did was get motivated, get active, get busy, put it in my mind, put it in everybody I talk to's mind, that we cannot let anything he tries to do to destroy health care stand. Nothing. And we have to do whatever we have to do. And here at this hospital, the, the actions that have been happening, administration knows we've been fighting on the way health care people are treated. So while we fight for our patients, we can't forget to fight for ourselves too yeah. at the same time. Yeah. So hopefully everybody will continue to be active. We'll have more things going. There will be more committees, more involvement, and we need everybody there. And on this, administration, the doctors, the nurses, down to the custodian, we are all united on this. And we are not going to let this happen, and we're going to continue to fight. I'm Dr. Josie Valenzuela. And what's going on here today? Uh, today, this is a group of SEIU workers, which are hospital workers everywhere from the docks down to the techs, nurses, cafeteria workers. Um, we're all scared now that Trump is president that we're not going to be able to take care of our patients. And so we're out here voicing our discontent with that, basically. We want to be able to take care of people. We want people to stay covered. And as a doctor, how does it feel when patients get cut off from medical care? They may die. They can't survive. Having patients cut off from medical care is really awful. Um, I work in the emergency department, so I see a lot of the consequences of that. When people don't have good primary care, their diabetes gets worse, their high blood pressure gets worse, they get late diagnoses of cancer, and then all of that gets taken care of in the emergency department. We're not doing as good a job as their primary care doctors would be doing. It's kind of a stopgap to this flood of, of uninsured patients. So. And there are 30 billionaires in San Francisco, 130 billionaires in California. What's going on? Why can't we have free medical care for all people in California? Yeah, I'm not sure. I actually emailed Mark Zuckerberg and Priscilla Chan about that. They never got back to me. <laughs> I don't know why. No, I mean, I mean, he's worth 45 billion. It seems like he should be taxed to pay for health care for everyone and free education for everyone. You think that in a state like this, probably one of the richest states, I mean, we're richer than countries, that we could figure that out. And we have a supermajority legislature, the Democrats, Democratic governor, they could pass probably a bill to tax Mark and the boys to pay for free health care for people in California. Yeah, and that's what a lot of us voted on, um, on the voter ballots that came through before. We voted to keep the millionaire's tax, so I think a lot of citizens would be in favor of a tax like that, and, like an even higher one. And are you for single payer? Are you for getting rid of the insurance companies controlling health care in the United States? Yeah, I am. What would that mean? To have a single payer? Uh, well, what I envision it would mean is that People should not be profiting off the medical catastrophes of others. So the way insurance companies make money is that you pay them money and they try to pay for as little health care as possible. I think in a single payer system that has the true interests of the citizens in mind, you would one, it would not be for profit, so all the profits that are going to executives right now would go back into the health care system. Um, and two, hopefully it would simplify a lot of the bureaucracy that's costing practices money so we could concentrate on taking care of patients. Well, in Canada they have single payer. Everybody has health care all over the world. Yeah, a lot of civilized nations have single payer. Um, yeah, a lot of civilized nations have that. So we got to catch up, I think. Trump and this new government, you think they're interested in that kind of program? No, I don't. I don't. I think they're interested in taking care of wealthy citizens. Um, I mean, if you read Trump's platform, he's interested in block Medicaid grants. That's going to overall decrease the amount of money that goes to Medicaid. Repealing the ACA also will roll back all the Medicaid expansion that got millions of patients covered. So it's his position that you can read on his website that he wants to uninsure these Medicaid patients. So I think he's more interested in covering wealthy people and Medicaid patients, whatever, not interested. And Price, his nominee for H, uh, Health and Human Resource Director, has been investing in companies and profiting from companies, making a profit off of health care. What do you think about his candidates for these cabinet positions, particularly covering health and human oh, yeah. services? Well, I think so much for draining the swamp. He kind of, he turned it into a bog instead, so. I'm not optimistic, I would say. You don't think they're going to represent the, the regular people in this country? No, I don't. I think they're going to represent private insurers and profiteering. And how do doctors that you know feel about what's happening in the United States with Trump and the government that's coming in? I can't speak for all doctors, but I can speak for um, the residents' union in Northern California. 
to say that just all of us are really afraid of the changes that are coming. We're afraid that we're not going to be able to take care of people the way that we want to. And the, the reason that we got into this business is to take care of people. Um, and if they can't come see us, well, what's the point? What's the point of all the training if patients can't come? You want to do your job, basically, as a doctor. Yeah, I want to do my job. Yeah, I want to take care of people. And isn't that frustrating? You're a medical professional and you can't, or you're not allowed to do your job because of a system? It's incredibly frustrating, yeah. But I would say even more than frustrating, it's uh, soul-crushing, I would say. The people are really suffering, um, and uh, we're just doing everything that we can, but we need help. We need help from our government. And in California, it's a, one of the wealthiest states in the world, yeah. 130 billionaires. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg is worth $45 billion. I mean, it seems like they could pass a single payer in California and tax these billionaires and, and make them pay. Are you in favor of that? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Is your union supporting that? <laughs> I won't say the union supports that, but I personally do. I don't think the union has a position on that, on single payer specifically, but I personally do support that very strongly. How long have you been a doctor here? Uh, I've been a doctor here three years. Do you like it? Yeah, I do like it. Yeah, it's a great town. The people here are great. So this is John Wildsworth, he's one of the VPs. So if you didn't know it, I'm the chapter president of the miscellaneous out here at San Francisco General. And John is one of the VPs. Okay. Yes, see this big beautiful hospital right here? We're all invested in this healthcare system. And we need to let, let, let this administration know that we're gonna fight for the healthcare, for the poor, and everyone that needs us, this health net. And SEIU is going to be in the front of that fight. This is just a small picture of where we're going. And we're going to stand together and make sure that there's affordable health care for everyone. Okay. Tim Paulson, I'm the executive director of the San Francisco Labor Council, represents over 150 unions and 100,000 men and women here in the city and county of San Francisco. Really wonderful on the first day of Trump's inauguration, which we are absolutely disappointed with and I think is absolutely disgusting that we're outside the best public hospital in California with the best public workers in California. The assaults on health care that are going to become um, a reality in the next couple of days, we're going to be on the street and we're going to continue to fight fight to make sure that the ACA doesn't get repealed. We're also going to fight to make sure that single payer for all is going to move forward. And these are the workers I'm standing with that are going to help us fight to make sure that health care for all becomes a pri becomes a right and not a privilege. Now in California, there are 5 million people on ACA, 200,000 health care workers may lose their job. What should labor do if he cuts uh, ACA and basically tells the people you're not going to get health care? Well, I'll tell you what, there are a lot of jobs at stake, both with the workers that are working right here behind us throughout the state. $22 billion is at stake here, not only for people that need health care, but also for workers that provide the health care. And we're going to do what we expect to do in, in Washington, make sure that the ACA does not get repealed. And we're going to pull out all stops to make sure that that happens. We did it when George Bush went out and decided he was going to get rid of Social Security and we stopped it from happening. We can stop the ACA being repealed and do real health care reform so that there's more jobs and that there's more health care for everybody in the United States. Well, in California you have 130 billionaires, the super majority of the Democrats in the legislature, Democratic governor. You think if it is repealed, they should pass a tax on the billionaires of California to pay for it, uh, replacing the health care benefits that people lose by the ACA? Taxing the wealthy to take care of stuff is the right thing to do. Taxing the wealthy with no program to actually implement the money is a bad program. There's got to be a program involved. A tax just to have a tax to do backfill is irresponsible. I'm on the executive board of an organization called the Californians for a Healthy California, which is totally dedicated to single payer, and we're going to continue to move that. We have a SWAT bill in the legislature that can work in that direction, but we've got to build the army to make it work, and that is what we can do in California. Probably New York and California are the two beacons of light left in this red state of the United States of America, and we're going to do what we can in California to do that. What's your name? Ingrid. Um, what kind of work do you do, Ingrid? Food and Nutrition Service. Um, what's going on here today? We have an action because Trump has got in office and it's affecting health care. And what do you think about what he's going to do? I think it's sad, very sad, that he hurt many lives now. Do uh, you think people are going to put up with what he's going to do? No. You're not, you're no. Not. And how, do you, how do you think this 
what will be affected here if they cut off ACA and a lot of poor people depend on that? Well, I think it's going to affect a lot of less affordable people that can afford health insurance. Uh, we have pre-existing patients have, uh, with bad hearts, diabetes, a lot of number of things. Kira Levy, and I'm a doctor here at this hospital, San Francisco General Hospital, and I'm here because I support the ACA, and I don't support Trump. How would the removal of ACA uh, repeal of it affect the doctors here at San Francisco's general renamed Zuckerberg Hospital? Well, I think mostly it will affect our patients. A lot of our patients rely on the ACA for their medical coverage, and I see firsthand every day what happens for folks that don't have access to medical care when they end up presenting here really sick with you know terminal diseases because they didn't have health care earlier on. So. San Francisco has a lot of wealthy people. Why are you? Why can't they take care of the uh, people who need health care in San Francisco? It's one of the richest cities in the world. All this money coming in, tech billionaires. Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree with you. I think we should raise taxes too, and that would help take care of that as well. Um, but I think that as a country, we have a responsibility to assure everybody that lives here. And how does it feel as a doctor when patients can't get the medical care that they need, and they may face death or even more problems medically? Um, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking to take care of people that are dying or incredibly sick because they didn't have access to health care and to, to be going through that with them and knowing that what they're experiencing was preventable, but as a society, we didn't show up and decide that it mattered enough. And are you in favor of single payer? Yes. I'm what, what would that mean? Um, it would mean Medicare for all, basically. Medicare has worked really well and it would just mean expanding it so that everybody, not just folks over 65, are covered. You think it's feasible? I do. I think it would get rid of a lot of the bureaucracy and stuff that we are spending money on right now in health care and make it much easier to organize. Now, President Trump says he's going to cover everyone with health care. Do you believe that? No, I don't believe anything he says. You don't think he's telling the truth? Usually not. Now, yeah. pr Tom Price, his appointment to Secretary of Health and Human Services, was investing in companies, uh, health care companies. What do you think about the... Uh, transparency and conflicts of interest in this new government? Um, I think it's clear that there are a lot of conflict of interest that we've never really had with a president prior. Um, I don't know as much about Tom Price specifically, but I think it's definitely concerning and something that we're going to all need to pay attention to. Go have been on the front lines of a woman's right to choose and abortion rights. Am I right? Yes. We have been on the front lines making sure that every person in our city has a has access to quality, affordable health care. We don't care about immigration status. We don't care about uh, if you're homeless. You don't care if you have insurance. We believe that everybody deserves health care. Am I right? Yes. We are dedicated and we have always been dedicated to making sure that all parts of our LGBT community have the services that are and the access to health care that are required for our community's health. Am I right? Yes. And we are union workers! And we know, and we know that nothing is won by sitting around and hoping. We know that we have to band together courageously with the man to win better health care for all, to win quality wages and good jobs for all, for patient safety and worker safety. So I'm asking you, are you ready to fight? Yes! Are you ready to fight? Yes! To Washington, D.C., the new administration, to let them know if they attack our health care, we will fight them. If they attack our educational system, what will we do? If they attack our social services, what will we do? If they attack our civil rights, what will they? What will we do? That's right. So, uh, in the media recently, you've heard people saying, "Oh, let's let's give him a chance. Let's give this guy a chance." No, right? We gave him a chance. We gave him a, a chance of the campaign trail to ease racial tension. Did he do that? No. We gave him a chance to name uh, cabinet picks that would be reflective of the people. Did he do that? No. I'm going to read off a couple of those uh, cabinet picks that he's made thus far. Tim Price for health care, a staunch opponent of ACA. Do we support that? No. Jeff Sessions for Attorney General, who referred to civil rights groups as un-American. Do we accept that? No.
Betsy DeVos for education, yeah. who wants to privatize education. Do we support that? Yeah. Andy Putzer, who opposes minimum wage. Do we support that? Yeah. Hearing Mr. Trump speak today, he talked about he was going to give the power to the people. Well, we are the people, and we will fight him every step of the way. We will fight him today. We will fight him tomorrow. We will fight him over the next four years. Are you with it? Are you with us with that? Yes. Will we fight? Yes. Will Good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be with you today on this very, very dark day. But I wanted to share with you why I am actually incredibly optimistic. Let's be clear. Under an eight years of a Democratic administration, Oxfam released a report this week showing that eight men have the same amount of wealth as a half of the population of the world. Eight men. So, I think we have an opportunity under this new dark administration to get farther than we've ever gotten before. And here's why I'm optimistic. There's three reasons. Number one, the injustice and the fact that the system is rigged has never been more obvious or clear than it is right now. The people he's appointing to these positions, that's going to make it easier for us to educate people about what's really going on in this country. And it's going to make it hard for politicians to sell us out. Number two, I have never seen engagement or activism like I have seen uh, since Mr. Trump has been elected president. There are people getting involved that never been political before, and we're going to need this level of engagement to make a difference. We haven't seen it since the 60s, and we've got to be in the streets, day in and day out, organizing at every point of this country if we're going to make the real change and the world we want to see. And number three, let's face it, the Democratic Party has not been serving us well. And the Democratic Party must move left. It must become more progressive if we're ever going to remain and regain power. We are regaining that power here in San Francisco. We've taken over a progressive majority of our local Democratic Party. We have a majority on our state Democratic Party boards. And we have leaders at the federal level, like Bernie Sanders, like Elizabeth Warren, like Keith Ellison, that are going to move us left there too. So there is hope, I think, even though we have incredible repressive regime that we're under, that we the people can organize and make more change over the next four years than we did in the last eight. And I will be there with you standing every step of the way. Uh, Sarah Larson, Local 21. And you're here today. Why are you concerned about what's going on in Washington? Because our health care is being threatened, our whole underlying stability of our society at this point is being threatened What with Social Security and Medicare being on the block. And you've been fighting for enough beds for psychiatric patients here at yeah. San Francisco. Why don't you talk about that? Why in this rich city, Zuckerberg, worth $45 billion, you don't have enough beds for the psychiatric patients in San Francisco? I, I couldn't tell you. I know we have too few uh, boarding cares, too few uh, protected settings, and all the poor people with psychiatric issues are being crammed into a tiny little part of the tenderloin, which is like the most dangerous, getting more dangerous all the time. I mean, there have been stabbings. I mean, you've got a lot of people who, are, who need help. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very dangerous place because everything's congested. It's all stuffed in together. We need more housing. Unfortunately, we really lost a lot when they closed the old Laguna Honda because it used to be a uh, what's called an almshouse for elder disabled people that have no means of support could literally spend the rest of their lives there in maybe not in the lap of luxury but in a safe and protected area and they ended up building a new hospital that no longer accommodates that although they have a big empty building there well, I mean, it seems like you've got a lot of billionaires in San Francisco, Zuckerberg, who they yeah. really named this hospital over. Shouldn't they be forced to pay for these basic social needs for poor people, for people who have health problems? Yeah, yeah, I think so. They haven't, they haven't 
spiffed up any of the seventh floor units or psych emergency. Uh, they made all this really nice stuff, but they didn't really do much for any of, for our mentally ill. So I'm here with Brenda Barros. She's the chapter president of SEIU 1021 at San Francisco General Hospital. Now, Brenda, you're concerned and your union members are concerned about the fact that uh, President Trump may cut ACA, throw people off health care. 200,000 workers in California might lose their job, health care workers. Uh, what are your concerns about this new administration and what labor should do to fight back? Um, my concerns is that... Um I already see some of the changes that are coming down in healthcare, and um, such as such as you know uh, the corporate mentality that's coming to healthcare, and so we see changes like that, and some of us feel like some of it's okay, but then again, you know the the workers are being left out, right? So you know as the changes have come and we become more corporate, um, the satisfaction of the staff and the people who actually provide the health care, and the complaints from people who provide the health care about not having the ability because of short staffing, because of various other reasons, to provide the kind of care that they want to give people. It's, it, 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 I perceive that it will get worse if they, if they cut ACA. Now, Mark Zuckerberg gave $75 million to the hospital. They've changed the name of the hospital to name it after him. Right. Uh, and yet you're saying that they're corporatizing the hospital. They're not providing the kind of care they should provide at the hospital. What concretely does that mean? Okay, so I'm not saying that, that, that we don't provide care. We always try to provide people the best care. But what I'm saying is that it's getting increasingly difficult. Well, talk do. about how that is. Well, I mean, it's, people are under a lot of stress. You know, uh, why are they under stress here? After work, there's a lot of uh, bullying and harassment that goes on in, within the healthcare industry. That's like a little dirty secret within healthcare, but it happens. And so we're trying to address it at San Francisco General. So I have to give our administration credit. They're trying. The city has just started talking to us about it. So hopefully we can make improvements on it. But, you know, the more people get pushed, 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 and we become corporate, and it becomes about numbers and not about people. Um, I can perceive that becoming a major problem within the healthcare industry. Well, you say you're stressed out. Are there are not enough workers here uh, to take care of the patients. They need more staffing. Uh, yet, San Francisco has 30 billionaires. You've got some of the richest people in the world living in San Francisco. Why isn't there the funding for well, proper of it, staffing? Part of it is, like I said, the corporate mentality, right? You know, um, a lot of people are following, you know, I'm, I'm a supervisor of my job. There, you know, I had to read that book, The Toyota Way. And I mean, that seems to be the principles in which they're operating to get more from less. Right? Yeah. So they expect people to work hard, hard, hard. And a lot of employees are becoming at their breaking point. And uh, the, uh, you need to know where to put the pizzas? Yes. You to go to the members? Oh, you can go to 1M. You can go to, you can go up all the way up the outpatient side. 1M, 3M, 4M. Don't go to lunch. Okay. And um, also there's an the issue of, of hedge funds that's come up. Uh, the city workers uh, are in a fight now over control of the pension fund. Who should control it? Are you concerned about 25% of the uh, funds of our pension fund going into hedge funds? Absolutely I am. Because, you know, when I retire, that's what I'm going to have to depend on, right? And I don't want anything to happen to jeopardize that. Um, I don't think at this time, in this economy, with the way the world is right now, particularly with Trump in office, that we should be taking any kind of risk with, with our pension money. I mean, it's bad enough they're going to probably be trying to come and cut our pensions, right? Eliminate public employee pensions and all that. But we want our money secure. We don't want them to have an excuse to come after us because they waste our money or they have to pay millions of dollars in fees to somebody who loses us money, and then we don't get that money back. That's unacceptable. We are can't you, have that. Are you surprised that President Trump has appointed Mnuchin, uh, these people who are actually hedge fund speculators, to the no, Treasury Department no, and to no, other? No, 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 no. I'm not surprised at all because that's their agenda. That is their agenda. I mean, people didn't want to believe it. People kept saying, oh, he really won't do that. Yes, it is. That's their agenda. They told us what they want to do. So it's, now it's up to us to fight it. And there's only one uh, miscellaneous employee on the... Hedge, uh, the pension fund, SFERS in San Francisco. Uh, why do they want to get rid of the one miscellaneous employee and the San Francisco Police Officers Association is supporting Casiato? Uh, why shouldn't there be representation of the miscellaneous employees on the uh, I, th I think it's about 
differences in opinions and mentalities. I think public sector workers who are not police and fire. It's my personal belief, and I'm not talking for my union, I'm talking for myself. I believe police and fire feel themselves privileged. And I think that they feel like they get 90% of their pension in San Francisco, and they want to hold on to that. I don't blame them for that. But what I'm saying is, don't take it away from us so you can have it. That's, what, that's why we need our representative on that committee. It is not fair to ha not have a miscellaneous representative when we're the largest number of employees. And a lot of city employees, poor paid city employees, are not getting very much in their pensions. They're, they're, some have lost their homes. I mean, what is the situation of the average city employee represented by uh, SEIU 1021? I think that they're, nobody gets rich off their pension. They don't. That's why, you know, the, the, the threat of Social Security being cut, the threat of pensions being cut, that can directly uh, impact em public employees badly. Now, now in California, some of the richest states in the, in the country and the world, there are 130 billionaires. If they do cut ACA uh, and uh, say there's going to be no more funding, are you in favor of getting the legislature, which has a supermajority Democratic, mm -hmm. they control, and a governor, to actually pass uh, legislation to make up that money with the billionaires in, in California? Absolutely. I, I, think they should, I think they owe it to us. I think they owe it to the people of San Francisco. You know, one of the things I said, my first tweet on Facebook after I heard he won was, okay, folks, now it's time to protect California. And they just need to protect California. That's it. I mean, if putting more money in is what protects California, they need to do it. And they seem to have a lot of money. Taxpayer. I'm perfectly willing for my tax dollars to go to protect the state I live in rather than send it to Washington, D.C. Well, why should it go to an average taxpayer? I mean, you've got the richest people in the world here in California. Yeah, and we know how the tax laws are, right? So if they change the tax laws, and we know that's a long way down the road, but what I'm saying is we, we give millions of dollars, no matter who it comes from, to the state government, right? A lot of that money gets shipped off to the federal government. I'm saying, I think... In my opinion, this is my opinion, I think that to protect California, if we have to withhold money from, to the federal government to take care of California, then so be it. Okay. And they should be willing to take that risk because their obligation is to protect us here in California. In other words, you're saying if Trump take, uh, cuts taxes for the wealthy That's and the rich... We should, in California, say the money stays here to help the people of That's California. That's right. The money stays here to help the people of California, who put in a lot of money. We take care of a lot of other states, right? Our money takes care of a lot of other states. We pay way more than it's needed. To, if we could keep all of our tax dollars and not be sending money to Washington, D.C., we wouldn't have a problem in California. We'd be very wealthy. We're the sixth biggest economy in the country. So, you know what? If they want our help, then they're going to have to cooperate. And I think Trump, as much as his rhetoric says, he, he's not stupid. He knows he can't fuck with California too much. ACA, no peace. No ACA. No peace. No ACA. No peace. No ACA. No peace. No ACA.